Alright, as promised, I'm going to show you how to dual boot with Windows and Backtrack. Start your Windows, put in Backtrack, go to Disk Management under your control panel. Once Disk Management loads, I want you to click on your C drive. Okay. I'm going to right click, shrink volume. Okay, what you're going to do when your shrink C comes up, you're going to want to mark a smaller, um, right here it's in megabytes, so this would be 77 uh, gigs, actually I'm sorry, that would be 7.7 .7 gigs, I don't want to use that much, I want to use, let's see, One thousand megabytes, which is one gigabyte. Actually, I probably need a little bit more than that. Click shrink. Okay. 1.96 gigabytes unallocated. What we're gonna do? Exit out, restart. Yeah, I can fix that. I haven't bothered to update it because I hardly use it, just for tutorial purposes, really. Give it a restart. wise to note that installing Windows first if you want to have Windows as your main operating system so no matter how many times Backtrack messes up you will still have Windows working fine you must install Windows first time with its active partition already set as primary so it'll boot to it and then you shrink that volume through Windows don't do it with another third party program because it won't set it as a primary partition It'll set it as a slave and it messes lots of things up. So what you do, you're going to start persistent live CD after you made your computer boot to your DVD reader. And then we're going to let it boot. That's okay, don't worry about it. It's plug and play shit. You haven't installed your drivers for your video yet, so it's probably gonna say some crazy stuff. Now, I hope you realize that this is the CLI, the command line interpreter. This is not the graphical user interface like we went through in part one. You must start that with StartX, I'll show you. It's also wise to note that after you install this, either as a dual boot or a single boot, you will be prompted with a username and password upon logging in, and it will be set as default, which is root and then tor for username and password. That is a Linux default, actually. It's been used on lots of KDE and X browser, and it fixed this for a very long time before Windows was even around, or Microsoft for that matter.
Sorry if it's shaky. Alright, we have to type start X. Hope you remember that. That's the most important thing of actually getting this live CD to do something. The reason I'm doing this twice is to show you that there is a different process when installing Linux, dual booting, than from just installing it as its main main driver, the only thing you're going to have on your computer. Go ahead and click start. Uh, install sh. Sh is a it starts most. It's pretty much the exe in Windows. So you can just go ahead and click it, and it'll run its script. Forward, select your time, select your state. And as before, I'm not going to completely go through this because I've already done it. But I will show you that a different menu pops up. If you want to look at part one and then part two is install, you will see that it doesn't say a particular, uh, which you would say column, that it comes up with after it realizes that the volume has been shrunk in order for it to be installed on. So, what you're going to do. This was not there before, due to it have, having no free space that was unmarked. So we created another partition, and now it realizes that. You would click this. And even though it says 100%, it's only 100% of the 2 gigs we created. Don't go off and think that you're going to lose your windows. Most people think that, and it doesn't happen. So what you would do is you click forward. I'm not going to do that because I've already done it. As you can see, I still have my backtrack. You want to do some old school stuff, you can do it like this. So what we have here is my first Windows directory that is set to a 7, which I believe is um, administrator. This partition would be my backtrack. This one would be the windows underneath the primary active directory, which is normal. Then we got some small file here that is probably the page file. And this is the one that we would be creating if we went through with the actual installation process, which I don't. Now we're going to go ahead and reboot. I'm going to act as if it installed. and you will see the grub boot manager and how it interlays itself with both of the operating systems on there so you can select it and don't freak out if your CD doesn't come out before pressing enter it happens all the time okay we've installed Linux Windows is already installed now we're gonna take out the CD we don't need it And this is what you will see. Backtrack, backtrack recovery mode, mem test, and the other operating systems would be Windows, which we saw first. So I'm going to go ahead and go into here. Earlier I was talking about you will be prompted with a username and password upon first logging in under the fresh install of backtrack. You will see that right now. Okay, it's asking me for a login. It doesn't say it's not in green, so it doesn't it mean it's not a prompt asking you for input. It's just asking you for a username. Root Tor. Now you didn't see me type in the password because 
it has a, a particular script that runs that hides that as you type it. It's pretty cool. Start X. This is my backtrack, and that will be it for this tutorial.